All right. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm quite happy to be here and to share with uh, you about like how AI changes education, right? Um, if we look at the history of education in China, actually some, some people might think that um, Chinese students had the most miserable learning journey in the whole world. And, but, you know, it's maybe for students in the whole world, maybe we suffer different, I mean, uh, things in life. But actually, um, here I would like to share with everyone here is uh, how AI can change the education. But as for AI, artificial intelligence may be quite a new, or maybe uh, we heard about it. It's a very new term for the past few years. But you know, the traditional teaching method or learning method has become a constraint or limitation for students in developing their innovation or creation in lives. And of course, uh, including business later on. But however, uh, um, what happened to our Chinese education led to us? Maybe that's a very good question. But however, um, what we can do to use uh, AI to change or subvert this phenomenon, I think uh, we can talk about a little bit over here. And as for the past like uh, four uh, years, several uh, human and machine competition has been done uh, in regarding the students' uh, learning. And the results have shown that uh, AI does help the students to improve their learning efficiency and learning, maybe the learning result. And let me share a little bit here about it here. Of course, according to economists, like we're talking about AI could make learning even more um, individualized, uh, flexible, inclusive, and engaging. And maybe Forbes, okay, we, many people believe that adaptive learning technology will pave the way for pedagogical resonance. Talking about resonance, can we say that maybe AI education uh, is a subversion for traditional education? Um, for traditional education, if we want to improve like three points progression uh, on learning, maybe it will take about three to five years teaching and research. But in our experiment in, Ch in China right now for AI adaptive learning program, actually to make or achieve 10 points progression is a very f like common phenomenon or scenario right now. And even in our like summer program, two months regular program, uh, the students can finish the task one month earlier, which is means they use only one month to finish the task and get better result than ever. So what's happening? Let me share a little bit over here. And of course, from the list, we will see that uh, there are many companies in the world, they have development in adaptive learning. And we can see from the user information that there are millions and millions of like, learners coming in using adaptive learning. However, I believe there may be more and more okay, in the future. Regarding issue squirrel AI system, okay, um, we have about a million students are learning at different uh, center, learning centers nationwide located in 200 cities. There are about uh, 1,000 more learning centers so far. As for our, our system, uh, just using a very little time to uh, brief a little bit, we, I call, we call it like a knowledge, artificial intelligence knowledge point scan. As we can see over here, we can see like 50 knowledge points over here. And the system itself can infer and track the mastery, each student's mastery of the knowledge points and identify exactly what the students might need to learn in the future and will design the most suitable learning content and a learning paths for each, each individual student. For example, for student A, he can master like 94% but cannot master 6% which is like three out of 50. And then the system, of course, can exactly remember and identify what are their weaknesses are. But however, for some like human teachers that will say that, I can do that too. I think so, maybe yes. But however, if we go into the next student, 
you can now master the knowledge points about 20%, um, which means that there are more weakness or more unfit, unfamiliar area the students have. So for uh, our system, we can exactly remember and analyze all, I mean, the learning result and provide uh, individualized learning content and learning paths and keep designing for um, a better learning process. And as we know that maybe in one class there will be 10 or 20 more students, they cannot, I mean, maybe master 20%. So for human teachers, actually, allow me to say, how do we can remember all these, not to mention data analysis? So if we go into like a, a student's G, okay, he can now master like 52, which means that there are more, even more unknown knowledge points. So for those students, they, maybe they're blind or they have no ideas what their strengths and weaknesses are. So it's really hard for the teachers to identify and justify where to start. So most of the situations and scenarios will be like the students um, may be evaluated by the teacher. And, you know, because there are so many knowledge points that he cannot master, so how about from the beginning? So every time from the beginning, it's from teacher's beginning, teacher's justification. It's not from exactly what the students cannot master, the weakness point. And the next graph chart, we can see that there are many different students, and also there are many different knowledge points. Let's take cube root as an example. So for all these students, different students, learning the same knowledge point, they have different time span. So for good students, they might use like 150 seconds. For a regular student, maybe 200. Maybe for slower, maybe 500 seconds. So according to the um, correctness and the speed of how they finish the task, the system itself will try to do the data analysis and try to provide the students, for each student, different learning paths, okay? And for one student, she learns like a different knowledge points using like different time span. So we can easily tell that uh, the students' strengths and weakness. So we, ha we don't have to like start from an universal approach, like, you know, just step by step according to the lesson plan. And we can, um, justify and, you know, maybe we can identify exactly and accurately about how, what the students need. It's not about learning, keep learning the same thing and wasting our time. It's about like how we strategize our learning strategy, I mean learning method and using lesser time to achieve better result. So uh, this is what we're doing right now. Um, if we look at the time span they, um, they have, okay, for different questions. We can see that, so all of the students, everyone is unique, you know. So I think that every student deserves different um, learning uh, the content, and a different learning process, different learning strategy, so they can well pace themselves while learning and get a better result. Learning efficiency effect effectiveness nowadays are very important. If we want to have a better life quality, we don't want to waste our time in like, you know, um, buried ourselves in never ending study. So efficiency and effectiveness in learning is what we're looking for. And you know, so the database will be very big. And for, from all of the database, actually, we will come up with an average or a norm. Of course, we will see some abnorm figures I mean, showing in the, in the back, I mean, in big data, database. But however, we will go into the real classroom to uh, make a further study about what real situation or real scenarios are. One very important point about um, artificial intelligence adaptive learning program is about we can figure out the root causes uh, for problems. Everyone will face challenges and difficulties while learning, but however, what is that actually? So when we get stuck at one question or one challenge, okay, while learning one knowledge point, sometimes it doesn't mean that 
you cannot, I mean, solve the problem. It's because we have the preceding knowledge points. Maybe, for, ex for example, like um, we want to solve equation problems, but without learning addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, we cannot do equation, I mean, equation questions. So only when we master the preceding knowledge points, then we come up to the current question right now. So these are for some like slow learners or some uh, students cannot master the knowledge points. It will be very helpful. And for some people, they will say, how about the super students, very good students? Same thing. Sometimes we will get stuck in keep learning and repeating learning the same stuff. So how about like, you know, if we know their strengths and we can expand, I mean, design a higher level degree of difficulty or more complex questions for the super teachers. So they won't get stuck and you know, they can have a further study or further learning. So that won't become to a like, you know, limitation or constraints for the students while they learn. And this is very important because in Chinese we say, 哪里不会学哪里, which means that what you already learn, I mean, or you master, you don't have to keep repeating them every day. But the point is, if you want to go further, you have to solve the problems that you cannot, okay? Maybe you, are, you cannot master the pre previous, pre I mean, pre preceding knowledge points, and then we try to solve that so we can move on. And the reason why we can, the reason why we can do this is because of the nanoscale knowledge points. It's 10 times deeper and, you know, maybe more subtle in knowledge points. We're splitting all these knowledge points into a more detailed points. Compare with other, like, competitors, okay? Uh, maybe I can use uh, uh, medicine as an example. In Chinese medicine, we have pulse feeling method. And then we have x-ray, and we have like um, magnetic, uh, what is, resonance image. And then we have nanoscale testing. So maybe from a tumor, we can identify centimeter size, but now we can really go into each cell. So actually, which means that the AI education adaptive learning program is about more detailed, more subtle um, data analysis. So when we ca can provide even um, better data analysis, which means that we can be more accurate on like, justifying what is the real problem for the students. Here are some experiments and results. Of course, uh, that's international, okay. Um, in Arizona or South Carolina State University, uh, we have some uh, experiments or the like, competition proves that AI education does help students to improve. And then we have uh, more competition. Um, and just uh, last month we have like a hundred CD competition, okay, in nationwide in China. And of course, we might be the we're, we might be one of the I mean the only Chinese company like uh, where academic paper accepted by international AI conferences. Um, let me just uh, flip. This is the image, okay, of our school. And these are some just examples of the test result their learning result. And for us, uh, AI education is not only a subversion for traditional education, but also it's a mission. That's what we think. Yeah, because we want to see more sparklings in students' eyes and more happy and confident students rather than, you know, exhausted and, you know, tired students. So hopefully in 20 years later, we can end two scenarios. One is the entrance examination for college, and the other one is like cutting down the high price, you know, uh, apartments or houses, okay, uh, around some super schools. So we want to create a super AI teacher. And so 
uh, we learn knowledge, we practice in life, but eventually we have to gain knowledge. So life is about wisdom, okay? So uh, thank you, everyone.